What's going on Cardinal fans? I'm Carla Bello. Welcome to the UIW Coaches Show where we recap, preview and talk with coaches about everything UIW sports. The UIW baseball team captured four wins last week as they defeated Texas State 6-1 on Tuesday and swept McNeese in a three-game series over the weekend by the score of 4-1, 6-5 and 8-6. Sulfo lost to Texas State and dropped three games to Central Arkansas at home, while men tennis defeated Laredo 4-1 on the road on Wednesday before falling to Arizona State on Friday. Stay tuned, Cardinal fans. We will speak to our UIW coaches coming up next. Cardinals, we have the men's baseball head coach, Patrick Hallmark. Hello, Coach, how are you? Hey, Carla, I'm good. Coach, you, got, you guys had a fantastic uh, stretch last week. What stood out to you in your four victories? Defense. We played good defense every game, and that was probably the, the key to winning all four games. Um, we hit, the offense was solid, and the pitching was mostly good, um, but the defense, that's been the key this year. You know, the games we've, the games we've lost that, that we probably shouldn't have lost, it was based on defense. So it's nice to be playing good defense. It makes the other team earn everything, and it's hard to earn everything. You know, if we're the same way. If we get a couple runs for free, we're hard to beat. But, uh, you know, defensively, we just have to keep being uh, consistent and fundamental. Your team is now back in the hunt for a top position in the Southland Conference. What do you feel will make the difference for the team moving forward in conference play? That sounds boring, but I, it's still defense. Defense. It's defense, yeah. Um, we kind of know who we are offensively, and, and offense comes and goes some. In pitching, we have several reliable arms, and we have some young guys that are still learning. Aaron Celestino, who wasn't very good against Sam Houston State, bounced back, was really good yesterday. And that's what young pitchers are going to do. But as long as he continues to grow, we'll be okay. And, and that was a sign of maturity and growth on Aaron's part yesterday. So we feel like we know who we are, um, both offensively and on the mound. We just need to keep being solid defensively. And uh, guys like Ryan Gonzalez really hold us together and Antonio Valdez because they play stressful positions defensively and they're doing a great job. Yes, Coach. And finally, you have a tough schedule this week with games against Texas, Missouri, and New Orleans. How do you plan on managing the team so that they can endure five games in six days? That's a good question. That's what I'm asking myself this morning. <laughs> I don't know who made that schedule. Um, it was me. but <laughs> So, yeah, Texas and Mizzou, the next two days will be tough. Um, I know... Obviously, I coach at Mizzou, so I know Steve well, and then I coached with David Pierce, who's at Texas. So I don't know the personnel at Texas as well, but I know David well. So they're very good clubs um, with very good coaches. So we got our hands full, and then we turn around and play UNO, New Orleans this weekend here at home, who's playing really good. Um, they just beat Sam Houston State this weekend. So we'll get it all mapped out. That's what we're doing today. We started, I started last night a little bit and the guys, assistant coaches are working hard to get ready for these games. So I don't exactly know how to answer your question yet, but we'll figure it out before game time tomorrow and we'll have a plan and, and it'll be a solid plan. Um, it'll revolve around throwing strikes. I know that. So, but it'll be a fun week, five games, all good teams. So we'll show up and uh, we'll certainly play hard. Yes, coach. Well, Coach, thank you so much for being here and good luck on these five games. <laughs> Thanks, Carla. Nice to be here. Hey, Cardinal fans, we have the softball head coach, Joe DiPietro. Hello, coach, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to have you here. Thanks. Coach, in game three against UCA, 
Your team was down early but never gave up and kept fighting until the end. What does it say about your team that they never gave up? Well, it's good to see. I mean, we got down seven to nothing by the second inning and um, they chipped away a little bit and got themselves back in the game. But, um, you know, we, that's the kind of stuff we needed all year long, you know, and it was good to see. And hopefully that's going to be the spark to get them going offensively because that's been our biggest struggle so far this year. Freshman Renee Huffman has been a solid pitcher for your team this year. What does she provide to your team? And are you surprised with her production this early in her career? Well, Renee was a big recruit. I mean, she had initially committed to the University of Michigan, uh, who's a perennial top 10 team in the country. And then she ended up quitting softball for a while. So what you're seeing now is not the typical Renee Hoffman. She's actually better than what she's pitched. Um, I think that time off have really affected her. So the other, the other issue she has right now is that she's failing for the first time. Um, she's not used to it and she's having a hard time dealing with it. So I think she's starting to get herself together a little bit and understanding at this level, you just can't do what you did at the high school level and a travel level. So I think next year she'll, she'll be even better. Um, in softball terms, what is a slapper and what characteristics do you look for in a slapper? Well, a slapper in softball is someone who's going to be in movement in the batter's box as the ball is coming to them. They're trying, and what they're trying to do is hit the ball down um, and use their speed to get on base. So the characteristics is someone that has good back control, that knows what the strike zone is, and that doesn't hit the ball up into the air. A slapper that hits the ball up into the air is worthless because they're playing us shallow anyway in the outfield. So our, our, our slappers are not going to beat anyone if you hit the ball in the air. So trying to hit the ball to the left side of the infield, shortstop, third base side, because they're in a left-hander's left uh, batter's box. And as they hit the ball, they're in movement already. So they're already moving down a line, which gives them an advantage. So if they can hit the ball in that direction, they're usually safe. And coach, finally, you head on the road to face SEU in a three-game series this week. What is your message to the student athletes as they approach to this series against the Wildcats? Well, we just have to get a win. I mean, Abilene is struggling as well. And, um, you know, if we just come out and play to our ability, we will be fine. But we haven't done that yet as a team. So I'm hoping this weekend with an opponent who's not at the top of the league, uh, we can go out there and grab some wins and kind of boost the morale a little bit more and try to get back into the conference race because even where we are now, we still have an opportunity to make the conference tournament. So um, that's, that's going to be an important weekend for us this weekend. Yes, well, Coach, thank you so much for being here and keep up the hard work. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelby Netherlin. I'm a softball player here for the University Incarnate Word. Being on the softball team has given me the opportunity to live out a lifelong dream of being a Division I athlete. And it's already given me a lifelong group of friends that I'll get to know for the rest of my life. Hi, my name is Haley Goins. I'm Jordan Goins, and we play softball here at the University of Incarnate Word. Um, playing for the URW softball team has given me the opportunity to play ball next to my sister, who I've been playing with all my life and it's given me the opportunity to play in front of my family and be here close to them. Without y'all, we wouldn't have this opportunity. Please donate. Go, Go cards. cards! Hey Cardinal fans, we have the women's and men's track and cross country head coach, Dr. Derek Riddle. Hello coach, how are you? Good, how are you doing Carla? Good, good to have you. Thanks, thanks for having me back again. I always enjoy coming. <laughs> Coach, the Baylor Invitational Meet was this past week, and both the men and the women finished second. Mm -hmm. um, can you please describe the experience you and your team had during this competition? Uh, it was a great meet for us. Uh, it's still early in the season, still early in outdoor, um, so we're still working through some stuff, uh, you know, working to improve our execution, uh, still rounding into, into our best shape. I mean, we, we had the indoor season, but then we have a little bit of a lull after indoor where we recover, you know, rest up a little bit, and then we start gearing back up for outdoors. So for being early in the season, weather held up well. It was very windy, about 20 mile per hour wind, so that hurt us a little bit in some of the, the oval races, like the 400, the 400 hurdles, the 800, et cetera. But uh, overall, it was a, a great team competition. We were close to Baylor on the men's side, just a few points behind them. So uh, 
uh, it was a very promising start. Coach, after watching your team compete, what are the greatest strengths of your team? Uh, on the women's side, we're well-rounded. I mean, we're going to score points at the conference meet and everything. Uh, so that, that's our greatest strength is I, I believe we're up there with Stephen F. Austin as the most well-rounded team in the conference. On the men's side, our, our, our distance running continues to be a, a great strength for us. Our jumping is really coming around on the men's side. Uh, and our relays are going to be strong for us as well uh, on the men's side. So, again, I think being well-rounded is a strength for us. And then the athletes really push each other and hold each other accountable. So I think that's another strength. Coach, do your 400-meter dash printer, does he focus more on endurance or speed? A 400-meter? Mm -hmm. it's, it's mostly speed. I mean, it's a sprinting event, so they do a lot of speed work. Uh, they do a little bit of endurance work just with the quantity of work that they get in the sprinting. It kind of lends itself to being uh, helping them on the endurance part of it. Uh, but the 400 is 80% anaerobic, so with, which is without oxygen. So uh, we work a lot of sprinting, a lot of 150s, a lot of 200s, some okay. 250s, a few 300 meter uh, in practice. But yeah. Wow. And how does a long jumper improve their distance? That's a good question. If their approach on the runway is strong, that's going to make a big difference. And then we look for them to hit the board. It's a wooden board that gives you some, it has some give, it gives you some feedback. If they hit the board, we want them to be up, you know, not just straight, flat, what we call it, but we want them to have height in their, in their uh, jump when they hit the board. But ultimately, if their run up down the runway is good, their, their long jump is going to be strong. And just continuing to work reps and work in the weight room, make sure that they're yeah. very elastic and, and, yeah. and bouncy. Yeah, I was thinking about it had to be very flexible. Yeah, very, very. I mean, they want to hit that board and you're exploding off the board. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, using every, every ounce of it that you can. Because usually, like, like I said, at our place, we have wood and it's uh, some aluminum underneath it. So it gives when you watch them and they hit the board. It's, it's going to give them some, some good feedback. And as long as they're going up, then, uh, and, and their momentum will carry them far. They will do great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and coach, um, lastly, your team had an incredible performance at the UIW Spring Break Invitational. Mm -hmm. And this past week, they only needed 15.5 points to tie first with Baylor. How are you preparing your team for this upcoming, for the Texas Relays? Uh, it's a good question. Um, this week, it's really just about fine tuning. We have a short week. Texas Relay starts Wednesday for us. Uh, Rodney Littlejohn and Maddie Miles are going to be competing in the decathlon and the heptathlon, respectively. And they'll be our first two athletes in school history to ever compete in the multis at Texas Relays. And then the rest of the team competes Thursday and Friday at the Relays. So it's really just about fine-tuning, uh, spending some time in the athletic training room, uh, making sure they're recovered and, and you know feeling good mm -hmm. for Texas Relays because they put in the work. So it's really just uh, about recovering fine-tuning a few things, and then working a little bit on the mental game. Because at Texas Relays, there's about 25,000 people in the bleachers. It's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's an experience that we don't have a lot at track meets. Usually track meets, there's 1,500 people in the bleachers, you know. But uh, this, this one, I think that Mike Myers Stadium holds 25,000 people, and it's usually packed. So it's a great atmosphere, music playing. You have Olympians competing in the meet as well national champions competing in the meet, wow. world champions. And uh, so it's really just making sure that they feel good, they're excited and they're motivated to go and represent UIW there. Yeah, well, so. well, Coach, thank you so much for being here and good luck at Austin this weekend. Appreciate it, Carla. Thank you very much. <laughs> Want to impress your friends at the next UIW tailgating party? Here at NCR, we have plenty of makes and models for every personality, even yours, Red. Do you see anything here that catches your eye? the type of tailgating I had in mind, Red. Hey, Cardinal fans, we have the men's tennis head coach, Jonas Anderson. Hello, coach, how are you? Hi, I'm great, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, coach. Coach, your team was able to get a four to one victory over Laredo Community College. However, the second duel was canceled due to bad weather. Talk about your team's performance despite the change of plans. Well, 
you know, you always prepare to, you know, to go two matches and all of a sudden it was raining and it kind of got pushed back a little bit. Luckily, they had a covered court, so we got the doubles going first. And by the time we're done with the doubles, it was it was drying up, but it wasn't enough time to fit another match in, unfortunately. Coach, on Friday, your team faced its third Power 5 opponent of the season, Arizona State. What were some of the positives your team learned from this match? Well, anytime you play some of these really strong, you know, big schools, um, you, you're out there, you're trying to win every single point, you know, everything, games, sets, whatever you can get. And uh, Dennis, our number six guy, won the first set and he was, I think he was down one game uh, in the second set, but he was winning, but we, you know, unfortunately we played clinch and he didn't get to finish this match. And uh, Sebastian had a really strong performance in the number one singles and also Caleb Dyer had a really close match as well. So it was good performances and it's, it's looking good for, you know, going into conference. That's really good, Coach. And finally, what are some of the things you learn as a player here at, at UIW that, that is helping you as a coach? Well, I think, you know, just the basics, you know, I've been there, I've done that, you know, combine schoolwork with, you know, tennis and, and match play. And a lot of times it's not easy. You just got to kind of, you know, find the right balance where you can manage everything at a, at a high level. And I think that's something that, you know, you can always talk to them because you can relate to what they're going through. Well, Coach, thank you so much for thank being you. here today and hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey Cardinal fans, we have the women's tennis head coach Devin Wolke. Hello coach, how are you? Doing great, thank you. Um, coach, you played against SLU this on the road this week, this past weekend. What were some of the positive takeaways from this match? Um, I mean, we competed hard. Um, we played a great team that's you know, improving each year and we played them pretty tough. Um, being a, you know, a woman down again, um, only having five healthy girls, I thought we competed really hard and we gave them a good fight. Um, it kind of, you know, it let us reevaluate. Our goals are still the same that we started with this uh, incoming season and we're still trying to make the conference tournament. And, you know, I reminded the girls that our goals haven't changed. You know, our short-term goals, goals might have changed, but our long-term big picture goal is still, still the same no matter how we're doing in this season. So um, we just got to keep, you know, striving and use that as motivation just to keep fighting and just try to get better. Coach, what is the key to having a solid serve? And what do you tell your girls while they're, to focus on while they're serving? Um, the serve is pretty much the only shot in tennis that you're in control of. After that, the, bo the ball's on their court, they hit the ball to you, you don't really have a lot of control. Um, so the serve is one of the one things that you do control, um, you start the point with. Um, so I think the, the first thing is a good toss, getting your toss where you need it to be, um, good knee bend, you know, going up and just you know, executing your serve and then just kind of visualizing, picking your spot where you want to hit it and just going out there and hitting a good serve, you know, picking your spot and hitting it. Coach, you host New Orleans this week. What is it going to take to secure the victory against them? Um, they're also a good team. They're fighting for a conference uh, uh, seeds in the tournament. So we're just going to try to go out there and do the best that we can. Um, it's just going to come down to, you know, playing well, um, executing what we're trying to do. Um, and just coming together as a team and then just try, believing in themselves, believing in each other and just kind of believing in what we're trying to accomplish out there. Coach, thank you so much for being here and it's always nice to have you here. Thank you for having me again.
up to date with UIW Athletics this week as baseball takes on Texas on Tuesday at 7 p.m. at the Nelson Wolf Stadium before returning home against Missouri on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. The Cardinals then host a three-game series versus New Orleans from Friday through Sunday. Soulful travels to Abilene Christian for a three-game series against the Wildcats. Women's Tennis hosts New Orleans on Friday at 2 p.m. and Nichols on Sunday at 11 a.m., while Men Tennis hosts Nichols on Sunday at 11 a.m. Track and field will compete in both the Texas Relays and the Texas State Bobcat Invitational from Thursday through Saturday. Finally, UIW Synchronized Swimming will host the U.S. Collegiate Synchronized Swimming National Championship at the Palo Alto College from Thursday through Sunday. For more news and updates on all UIW sports, make sure to follow us at UIW Athletics on all our social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For UIW Athletics, I'm Carla Bello. Have a beautiful day.